You're listening to the Play Therapy Podcast with Dr. Brenna Hicks, your source for centered and focused play therapy coaching. Hi, I'm Dr. Brenna Hicks, the Kid Counselor. This is the Play Therapy Podcast where you get a master class in child-centered play therapy and practical support and application for your work with children and their families. In today's episode, I am answering a question from Ethan in Virginia. And Ethan was curious about what thematically is taking place if a child is choosing to play a board game is question number one. And question number two is what if the child makes up a game to play? And curious about themes and how he would kind of file those thematically. So Ethan, thanks so much for the question. Thank you for hanging out with me in Virginia. So this is actually really helpful because oftentimes kids will move to board games at some point in their play. And sometimes you will have kids that will create a game from scratch. And so it is helpful to recognize what this means and kind of what to do with it thematically speaking when you are documenting. So let me start with some specifics about when a child plays a board game and then we'll kind of move into the imaginative make-believe games. So I think the most important thing to consider when we're talking about playing any kind of game, really. So if it's a board game, if it's a made-up game, if it's how many times can we catch the ball, any kind of competitive nature in the playroom, I think before we try to find the theme, it's really important to determine the why. And what I mean by that is, why is the child choosing to play a board game? Why is the child choosing to make up a game to play in the room? And the why will determine where you go with it thematically. So let me unpack some options, and I think that'll be a little bit more clear. So for example, when you have highly anxious kids, when you have kids that are paralyzed in fear, paralyzed by indecision, they're worriers, they really cannot handle the weight and pressure of being in charge. The simplest, easiest thing to do is to grab a board game because it has structure, it has organization, it has directions, it has rules, and that is comfortable and safe for highly anxious kids. So you can't necessarily categorize board game play as one theme. You have to understand the why behind the child choosing that activity. So if the child is choosing a board game, especially early on in the process, because it is comfortable and safe for them because they have such high levels of anxiety, then that is actually an antidote to their anxiety and it is that they are not ready to dive into deeper work yet. So that is playing it safe, essentially. Not that that is a theme, but if you understand the child is not ready to move into work phase yet and they're choosing safe options in the playroom right now, that does actually help you understand where the child is. So another reason that a child might play a board game is because they have an insatiable need to win. So if a child sets up Candyland, for example, and pulls out all of the specialty cards, and if you all are not familiar with the game Candyland, first of all, you should have it in your playroom. But second of all, it's essentially this little colored path and you draw a card that has one or two colored squares and you move your piece that many. But there are specialty cards where you go to special spots on the board. So you can go to the Candy Cane Forest or you can go to Princess Frostine or you can go to the Gumdrop Guy or Mrs. Butternut or whatever. So there are little picture cards that you get to skip ahead or go back. You never really know if you're far ahead, if you're going to start over, if you're right at the beginning, you can go all the way to the top. So the moral of the story is I kind of had to paint the picture for my international listeners or people that have never played Candyland. I don't want you lost. So you will have a kid that's really highly competitive and has an insatiable need to win, which related aside bonus freebie, that means it's a self-esteem rooted issue. So we can't look at that and say, oh, well, it's just a competition theme. It's competitive means to an end because they have to win because that makes themselves feel better about themselves because they have low self-esteem. Okay, so there's the train of thought you should be having in your head when a child has an insatiable need to win. So they grab all of the picture cards 
And they're the only ones that can get the picture cards, but they only choose the ones that get them further ahead on the board, not going backwards on the board. Well, you can say, oh, well, this child's playing a board game, so that must mean that it's a board game theme. No, if they're choosing to play the board game with you so they can slaughter you and they can cheat their way to victory, and then they can laud it in your face and say, I beat you, I beat you, you're so bad at this game, I always win, I'm awesome. It's self-esteem and it's self-aggrandizing behavior because they're trying to fake good to make themselves feel better about themselves. So that would be a completely different theme under which board game play would fall. Or then you have kids that are toward the end of their therapeutic journey and they've already done all of their work. Not all of it maybe, but a lot of their work. And their play is symbolic of their internal state, right? So when they're a chaotic, frantic, crazy mess in the playroom, and they're like a pinball bouncing off of every wall and they go from thing to thing to thing and they flit around and they can't focus on anything and they're throwing and they're crazy and they're aggressive. That's reflective of internal state. But when a child comes in and says, let's play a game and they sit down and they're calm and they're centered and they're able to sit for 30 minutes and play a game with you. And their whole demeanor is just one of stability and peace and comfort. That is reflective of their internal state as well. So oftentimes when you see board game choose, a child choose a board game later in the process, it is because they are finally at a place where they're able to sit down and be calm. Their brain has worked through enough of its junk that they're able to sit down and stay stable and consistent to play a board game with you. So again, that why is very different. So Ethan, and for all of you, I hope that you're starting to see it's not so much about that the child is playing a board game. It's the why behind choosing the board game that actually helps you identify the theme. So I hope that's helpful for question number one, Ethan. Question number two, what if a child makes up a game to play? Well, my answer really doesn't change, but my examples will differ. So again, it's more about the why. So why is the child making up the game? Is it so they can control all the rules and they can constantly have an advantage and they constantly have themselves in a position of superiority so that they can slaughter you? Okay, that's a power and control theme. Is it because they're finally at a place therapeutically where they can actually move into creative and imaginative play? Because remember, creative and imaginative play is typically a later theme that we see. Because your brain can only attend to so many things at once. So if your brain is so bogged down with anxiety or anger or aggression or guilt or shame or trauma or abuse or bullying or emotional upheaval or a divorce or birth of a new sibling or you fill in the blank scenario, if that's where your brain is, it has no bandwidth or interest in being creative. It has no capacity to be imaginative. So when we finally get to a point where a child might imaginatively come up with a game or creatively come up with a game, it means that they are mentally and emotionally at a much more regulated state. So again, we look at the why, and it's very clear. You'll be able to see why a child is playing the game whichever kind of game they're playing, whether it's a board game or a game they make up, you can always find the why. And then another opportunity to look at the why might be if they are creating the game because they want to collaboratively play with you. So they invent a game that involves both of you so that you're playing together and you're taking turns and it becomes collaborative play. That's another reason why a child might invent a game. So, Ethan, in answer to your question, I don't know that we look at gameplay as specifically one theme. I think it is a means to an end, and we're always wanting to see why the child is choosing that play, and that leads us to the theme. So, Ethan, thank you so much for the question. Thank you for reaching out. I think that's a really helpful thing for us to keep in mind. So I hope that you all find benefit in that. And as your kids in your playrooms are playing games of any sort, 
I hope that that is kind of something you can filter and you can recognize the intention behind the gameplay so that that can lead you to what they're working on, what issues they're facing, and the root cause of that behavior in their play. Thank you for all the questions and emails and all of the correspondence that you've been sending. If you'd like to get in touch with me, Brenna at the Kid Counselor is the way to do that. And I also have some training opportunities at playtherapynow.com if you're interested in a deeper training process with me. I'm grateful for each and every one of you in the next episode. We'll do another theme. So I know we kind of talked about themes today, but next week you will have another theme in our curriculum content. So lots of themes in the next few weeks. Grateful for each and every one of you. Talk again soon. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Play Therapy Podcast with Dr. Brenna Hicks. For more episodes and resources, please go to www.playtherapypodcast.com.